I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Um, grew up, dysfunctional home, a knucklehead until my seventh, uh, seventh grade year. My eighth grade year, I encountered a teacher by the name of Mr. Fitz. Um, wonderful in individual. Everybody in my eighth grade class loves him. But he sat me down one day after I was crying in class and talked to me and said, Michael, what's wrong with you? And I, I told him about the dysfunction in my home. I talked about my, my peers uh, abusing me verbally, emotionally, all those things. And um, I told him about where I am in life. And he told me one thing that changed my eighth grade career. He said, Mike, in order to change everything in your life, you're gonna have to change you. So I did. And I graduated the next year, freshman year, in English three in my freshman year, and advanced algebra with trig, because I applied myself. I used what he told me throughout the whole year to you know, turn into a better student. And I graduated with honors. And when they gave me this chapter, um, I kind of wrestled for a minute because it says, <laughs> it says how to automate engagement. And I, I'm thinking about back then when I was younger and I'm thinking about these kids now who, and the stuff that they face. And I, I had to use a different word. So I was like, how do I define engagement for them? How do I define engagement for the children of right now? And the only word I can see inside the definition was commitment. How do we get them to commit to themselves, the process of education? Commit to what's going on in the classroom 100% and get what you know what you're trying to convey to them. And I was going through the chapter and there's a couple of things that, that stood out to me. And um, a lot of the stuff is great. I'm not gonna lie to you, a lot of stuff is great in this chapter, but there were some things that I knew that for these children, our children of this generation, the way they react to certain things, social media, social influence, all those things, I said these things are the cores of what's going to happen, and we're going to go through those today. So one of the first ones was establishing rituals. And for them, you can't, you can't tell them it's a ritual. Let's talk, let's talk about learned behavior. We know more about learned behavior. Back when I was younger, I'm not going to talk about when I was younger. Let's talk about my daughter right now. So my daughter is from uh, Atlanta. She was having a really tough time with her mother. And uh, she learned a lot of her behavior from her mom, how she was reacting to her sister, how she was acting in school, the fighting and everything like that. It was stuff that her mom was doing. And she called me and said, Mike, I don't know what to do with her. I said, give her to me. She's been with me for three weeks. Inside of the structure that I put at home and at school, now she's a straight A student. She's captain of the volleyball team, captain of the track team and she's doing amazing at home. Why? Because I taught her a different behavior. So let's teach them a different behavior inside of the classroom. Let's try and give them something to strive for. Everybody loves to be on top. Everybody, we strive to be the captain of the football team. We strive to be the captain of the cheerleading team. All those things, we love to be on top. So let's go to the second one that I love the most, which is fostering leadership and teamwork. Because that right there is how we get them ready for workforce. We're giving them education, some of the things that they need in between, but we're getting them ready for the workforce. We're trying to create upstanding human beings, some citizens, right? So let's talk about leadership. How do we foster leadership? What's the average amount of students in your classroom? Maybe about 12, 15? So let's say 15. What if you broke three teams of five up and they were corporations and every week, they would, re they would uh, uh, rotate who's the CEO, president, vice president, manager, and, uh, and inside that little group, that's how they manage their projects. Everybody knows, so they come in, and this is how you get that part one where they were talking about uh, uh, just uh, uh, captivating with the curriculum. So every, every week, Monday, they know to come to the board and they see on their team who's, they, who's gonna be the CEO, and who's gonna be the vice president, who's gonna be the president. And they know, and then under that, there's who they're supposed to be in that role. So we're teaching both leadership and following at the same time as teamwork. Because one week you may be the CEO, but next week you may just be an assistant. So next week you'll just probably be getting paperwork from the teacher for that group. And you may help out with a few things. But if you're the CEO, that means you manage that group. You manage everybody's expectation in that group. Hey guys, let's get it all together. We got a project to do, we want to finish first. And get some type of thing that, that, that happened at the end of the month, the best group that, that came about, who worked together, who got all their work done, they get a certain thing at the end of the month. 
I don't care. I don't, I don't know what it is. Whatever it is you want to give your students, whatever you know that they love that will be good for them, give it to them. But now you're teaching, five, you're teaching leadership, you're, te you're teaching teamwork, and they'll get engaged because every week there's a new person involved as a leader. It's not one person they got to listen to every week. You know, they don't have to listen to Tabitha every week. No, if one week may be Tabitha, next week it may be Leon. And then it may be Kathy. Everyone has a chance to be a leader. Everyone has a chance to fulfill a role in the classroom. And the person that's the board member on, on top of everybody is you. So they have, to repeat, or they have to report to the board by the end of the day. And then at the end of the week, you start, you get an evaluation sheet. It's used for every week. How did everyone do as an assistant, as a president, as a manager, vice president, and as the CEO? And then you utilize that to teach them, okay, this week for, for our CEOs, I need you to work on communication. Because last week our communication was broken. And that's how you foster some of the leadership and, and teamwork into those classrooms. And then uh, I saw number four was saying to integrate technology. And I was like, how do we integrate technology without getting them off track? Because they love that technology. How do we get them not to scroll through Instagram, but to integrate that into the classroom? Well, the CEO is a part of that. I need you to make sure that no one's on Instagram. But if we're doing some research, pull out your phone. Get to Google. Let's, let's show them how to do smart things with their smartphone. I know too many grown-ups that tell me I don't know how to get to this place, but they have an Android phone. How do you not know where to get somewhere and I know you have Google Maps on your phone? <laughs> do smart things with your smart. My mentor told me that one day. Because I, I, I told him I don't know how to do that. He said, do you have a phone? I was like, yeah. He said, then you know how to do it. My wife one time, she said, I don't know how to make lasagna. I said, yes, you do. You have Google. Do a smart thing with your smartphone. Let's teach them how to do smart things with smart. My daughter, all the time. Dad, how do, how, what is this? Define this for me. How, how are you going to tell me that? You have an Apple. You have a, I know you have multiple ways to find it on there. So let's integrate the technology some type of way. Let's say uh, the group that was doing well last week, for research-wise, they can use their phone at that table. So it, it makes everybody want to do better. Like, no, I want to be able to use my phone next week for this process. And if you, that group finishes up, how about uh, last week, whatever group was doing well, whatever uh, corporation was doing well, because we're going to call them corporations when we do it. We're going to make them feel big, like they're a part of something. Whatever corporation was doing well at that point, let's make sure that next week during free time, you can have your phone. You can scroll, you can take, as long as you're not disrupting the class, you guys who did great last year, you had, you had checks all across the board, you worked well as a team, you can utilize your phone in the free time if you're done with your work. And everybody's gonna start striving for that. They're gonna be like, I wanna do great next week, so I wanna get, all, get my stuff done. And then they'll, for, they'll force their way into doing their work efficiently and correctly on teamwork. Those are the type of things that I came up with. You don't have to foster what I, what I said in this room. I'm just giving you a few ideas that may work because I, I look at our children, they're different than us. They grew up and they're growing up in a different time than we did. When all the things that we had to grow up thinking about was you know, going out to the park, playing in our, you know, in our clothes and everything like that. These kids gotta worry about who's gonna beat them up, who wants to beat them up, who's abusing them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. They have to worry about what the relationships they're going on at home, and they bring it to you, and they don't know how to manage their feelings. It's for you in, this, in the classroom setting to take their mind off of what they're doing, get them focused on the task at hand, because they don't know, like what my teacher told me, in order to get out of that problem, in order to get somewhere else, you're going to have to do well in school. You cannot get out of your household situation, out of your community situation, out of your personal life unless you do well in certain areas of your life, and school starts with that. We are the beginning of their life. We're not the cause of it, but we're the beginning of the decisions that they can make that can change their life. And right now, they're in the tipping point of who they are. They're trying to find who they are in the midst of, of, of a world that's crashing and burning. We have to find tools and ways to make it happen, and I, and I feel like you guys have it. And then the last one, and I'm, just, I'm not going to be long, is cultivating school-wide social support. What if all these corporations were competing against each other for a party at the end of the month? So every classroom has four, cor three corporations, because we say the average is uh, three, uh, 15 kids, and every corporation at the end of the month that, that work well, they come together in the auditorium, they can have a pizza party. Or they can have some about something that you blah 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 whatever. And this is this this happens school wide. Now all of them know that they're competing against 
each other in a school project. What, to them, they're thinking they're competing against each other to get a pizza party, but in actuality, they're competing against each other on a corporate level. You just taught them how to uh, compete with each other on a corporate level. They're t learning each other on a job type environment. And these are just small things that I wanted to uh, give to you to see if you can do them. If you want to borrow something that's fine with me, I'd love to come back and see how it's working because I'll, I'll be back, you said, April 1st, right, uh, to talk to the children. And I'll have something way different to talk to them about because I understand where they are in life. But for you guys, I wanted you to understand that a teacher one day had a conversation with me. Changed my life from being a, a Chicago knucklehead. You guys see the news. This was in 1990 something. <laughs> but that teacher changed my life from being a D and F student to graduating to my freshman year, advanced algebra with trig, English three, and graduated a year early. I graduated in, in my junior year because everything was done. My senior year, I was just playing sports and helping out other teachers. College, I went through. I went through in three years straight. A four-year degree in three years because I learned something from that one teacher. I'm never gonna get anything in life, anything, unless I take that moment and utilize it for the rest of my life. And I guarantee you, if you do that for your students, if you show them that the only way you're gonna get out of the situation you're in, we're talking about all the way to your own situation, is if you do good right now, someone will listen, someone. And I'm gonna tell you now, this is my mindset. I don't take it too much personal. I'm gonna leave it with this. When I talk to those kids, I don't know how many probably kids probably have what six or seven hundred or more children, more than that. We're a small campus. Small campus. About 135. 135 kids. I don't care if only one of them listens. I'll feel great because that means I changed one life. And that's how you do things. You do things one thing at a time. You take one step at a time. If someone told you to build a brick wall, could you do it all at once? No. You take one brick lay it correctly. And then you lay the other brick and you lay it correctly. You want to lay a real foundation for the future? It, don't, it, it took a little while for them to build the United States of America. If y'all want to build a new United States, you're going to have to do it one brick at a time. That means one student has to listen. And then next year, another student has to listen. And then you're going to build a community one day where all of them are going to help other kids. And I guarantee you, you as a teacher will feel great in the end. Thank you so much for listening. So chapter six uh, focused on five actions to build, to help students build understanding. <coughs> so the first action is 